Tonight, we're talking about how even the simplest acts of kindness can make a huge difference in someone's life. From New York City, I'm Rachel McKinney. This is With Love Us. Living through the COVID-19 pandemic, it's hard to know which way is up or even to know what to do to help. We're all experiencing moments of anxiety and needing support and solace from one another. If I'm honest, I've been feeling overwhelmed by all of this. But even in the midst of this madness and grief, the one thing I know for sure is that we will find a way to come through this. Because right now, people all around the world are realizing we need each other. People are finding ways to come together and choosing love over fear. This moment reminds me of a story I wrote right after the 2015 Paris terrorist attacks, when people felt lost confused, and everything seemed to grind to a halt. I call the story time after time. I hope it helps. Tonight, I am filled with mixed emotions. As I ride the subway home, I notice other weary faces. It's been a long day for all of us. And as my body settles, I realize I'm overly tired because I can't focus on anything and my mind begins to wander. The world is under siege and I have friends and family who are much too close to this devastation. Everyone is suffering with no end in sight. It's times like these I am reminded of a kind, gentle man named Fred Rogers. He was a children's television host and my childhood hero who shared with his audience when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. And that's what I want to do, to help find ways to counterbalance this insanity for myself and for those around me. So we're not frozen in fear. I want people to know you are not alone. I have to admit though, the moment I am completely worn down and scared, I'm not sure what I can do or even where to start. In the state, I'm not sure I'm much help to anyone. When my subway finally arrives at my stop, as I walk down the stairs with these thoughts swirling in my mind, I hear music. I feel like I'm inside a movie, and this, this is my soundtrack. Curious, I turn the corner and I see a busker who is playing his electric guitar on the busy sidewalk. I walk by and smile, and then hurry home so I can eat because at this point, it's 10 p.m. I haven't eaten for eight hours. I'm starving. Listening to his beautiful music fade as I walk away, I am drawn back. Now, I have found myself leaning against the metal gate of a nearby shop that is closed for the day, and I listen to him play. It's surreal. The subway roars above our heads as it noisily makes its way to the next stop. Cars whiz by, honking their horns, swerving around pedestrians. People hurriedly walk between us, unaware of their surroundings as they talk on their phone. And yet, I notice none of it. All I see is this busker, and all he sees is me. And this, this is my own private concert. It feels like I'm in the eye of a hurricane, calm, peaceful, and safe as everything swirls around me. The busker, he is on this exceptionally frenetic corner, sharing his soul, singing a haunted rendition of Time After Time. Not only do I love his song choice, but I love that he chose Cindy Lauper. She was born in Queens. Another girl walks by, notices this special moment, and drops money into the busker's guitar case, also hesitates to leave. You can stay if you want, and she comes over and leans on the metal gate with me. We experience the beauty of this moment together. When the busker stops playing, I go over to give him money. I notice his hands are cracked as he lights a cigarette. 
The bright light sparks like a beacon in the light and enhances the silver in his beard. Thank you so much for being here today. This is exactly what I needed. I'm Rachel. I'm Danny. Are you from New York? I'm staying with some friends in Long Island City. I've lived here for 22 years. You? 11. He takes a long drag off of his cigarette. Do you see the guy behind me? Yeah. I wanted to continue playing, but it was hard to concentrate because... Because he's casing you. Yeah, I saw him too. I've, I've been watching him for you. I would have left already, but I'm parked on a dark street. Tell you what, go ahead and pack up. I'll be right back. Danny does. In the meantime, I walk over to my friendly stranger and introduce myself. Hi, I'm Rachel. What's your name? I'm Iris. I was wondering if you could help me out. See that guy over there? Yeah, I saw him too. Would you mind helping me walk Danny to his car? Without hesitation, Iris says, let's do it. As we set off into the dark walking Danny and his guitar to safety, we find out Iris is a yoga instructor. She had just come from work when she saw Danny playing on the corner. I asked her, what made you stop? Um, the last couple of days it's been hard. I've been asking myself lately, what am I seeking? And the word connection came up. So when I saw Danny playing and you standing there listening, I decided to stay, to connect. Connection. This revelation strikes my heart deeply. The world feels completely disconnected, myself included. Nothing that is going on in the world makes any sense, except this very moment. Three strangers coming together seeking comfort and finding refuge by helping one another. We all hug and continue to our next destinations. Danny seeking another busy corner to share his beautiful music without threat of being mugged. Iris seeking to rest her tired body after work. And me, seeking food for my belly after nine hours. Life can be scary, but we must also never forget that there is love in this world. And time after time, love will find you, even in the kindness of strangers. The video I've attached is one I took after I bumped into Danny for the first time. It was nearly a year after I wrote the story. Enjoy. Bye. 
Time. 